fans among you, you might recognise this as a very close relation to the original Lotus Elise. And you would be totally correct. It is a close relation to the original Lotus Elise. But it is also home to the most power-dense battery in the entire world, and by some significant margin as well, approximately 10 times more power-dense. So I'm going to try and explain how this is possible and how the team at Niobe have made this a reality. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. So before we get going, I think it's important to distinguish between power density and energy density. Now, if you imagine that a battery is a swimming pool, the size of the swimming pool and how much water you can get into it, that's your energy density. But how quickly you can fill it up and drain it, that's your power density. And this car, with approximately 10 times the power density of anything else that's available in the world, means that it can fill up that swimming pool super, super quickly, and it can also extract an enormous amount of power from it as well. And that means that this car can charge in just six minutes. And admittedly, that is with a 350 kilowatt charger. And yes, there are only 17 of those in the UK. But even with 100 kilowatt chargers or 200 kilowatt chargers, it is substantially quicker than any of its competitors. So how have they made this magic possible? Well, it's down to a few things, most notably the anode. So in your battery, you've got your anode, your cathode, and the electrolyte, which joins them, and then your external circuit that sends the electrons from one to the other. A small but notable caveat here, Niobolt aren't actually saying what the anode is made from, but we can hazard a guess it's some magical mixture of niobium, tungsten and some other chemical wizardry, materials that have a far greater conductivity than graphite or carbon anodes that we're used to seeing, making this anode a veritable five-star hotel for charged lithium ions. And not only that, these lithium ions can get into and out of the anode exceptionally easily, a bit like opening up the bifold doors to let guests in rather than asking them to climb through a small window. But I digress. And also an electrolyte, which we don't actually know that much about. That is their secret source. But again, it has that greater conductivity, so those charge ions can swim through that electrolyte super, super easily. And of course, there's some, been some design around how those anodes are structured as well, reducing that internal resistance so charged ions and electrons can flow through them with relative ease. And I imagine there's also some pretty sophisticated battery management software as well, because we know that the cooler the battery is, the quicker it is to charge. Now, if you've got a battery that can charge in just a meager six minutes or only a handful of minutes if you've got a slightly slower charger, then you don't necessarily need a massive battery. And that's interesting because when we talk about right-sizing batteries, you'd be forgiven for thinking that we're talking about small city cars having not 100 kilowatt hour batteries. If you were the owner of this extremely beautiful car, you probably would want a substantial amount of range. But if you also have the ability to charge it extremely quickly, perhaps you can get away with a much smaller battery. And that's what they've chosen to do here with a 35 kilowatt hour battery which is tiny when you consider that the average electric battery is around 40 to 60 kilowatt hours. Um, 35 kilowatt hours, that puts it in the same sort of field as your high-end Icona. Now, we have wanged on about this so much, but obviously we need to have right-sized batteries because that reduces the amount of materials that we put into them. We can spread those materials across a greater number of batteries. And that's exactly what they've done here. It's a 35 kilowatt hour battery, and if it can charge so quickly, why would you need a bigger one? But the more interesting thing is that obviously with a smaller battery, it's smaller and it's lighter. And look at this car, it's a sports car, it's got to be agile, it's like a ballet dancer and chucking in a massive battery would be like giving that ballet dancer an enormous rucksack. And really, you want to give it a bum bag. Right, a little bit about the design. So this is based on the original Lotus Elise and is actually designed by the original Lotus Elise designer, Julian Thompson, which he did it in partnership with Design House Callum and also Niobolt. Now, a fun fact about how this came to be. One of the Niobolt employees approached Julian Thompson when they worked together on the Lotus Elise and said, oh, we've got some really good batteries. It would be really good if we could, you know, chuck them in the boot and do a couple of test tracks, show how good these batteries can be. And Julian couldn't shy away from the chance to, you know, remedy all the things. He wished he could go back on the Lotus Elise and make that a little bit better. And he said, I think we could do one better and actually design a brand new vehicle. And that's exactly what he did. And here we have it. This, this brand new vehicle is reimagined for a lightweight electric era. There is one quite notable caveat in that this vehicle isn't necessarily going into production. It is here serving as a technology demonstrator. But my word, it does it so well. It shows what we can do when we can make batteries that much more power dense and that much more capable. And I hope it attracts the attention of loads of OEMs that are milling around here today at Goodwood. Um, 
But it is also such a good demonstration of the battery talent that exists here in the UK. We may not have an abundance of gigafactories, but we certainly have some amazing minds pioneering this next generation of batteries, which are fundamentally going to trickle down so that we can all benefit from more energy-dense, more power-dense electric vehicles.